State your name, ma'am. Jennifer Lee. Ms. Lee, you're for the court charge of grand theft times three. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir. I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. All right, ma'am. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? Thank you. No questions. Deputy Colonel History, Ms. Lee? She's on bond for another grand theft, but these all happen at the same time or around the same time. <laughs> she had a controlled substance in 23, three controlled substances out of Georgia in 16. Bond set at 5,000 on the grand theft, 5,000 for grand theft, 5,000 on the grand theft. No contact with the alleged victim. Court date's going to be March 14th at 9 o'clock. Is there any way that this could be reduced, sir? I can prove that all of these charges are not... That I feel like my former boss is using his influence in this town to um, really... Me why, don't, why, don't you, why don't you why don't you just wait and talk to your public defender about all that maybe he can get the charges reduced or she can because well, i can't get out of jail like this i can't pay any more bond money i've already lost two jobs from the other charges that he put on me well i don't think your boss your former boss has that much pull in this town Step to Good your night. right to the T. When the green light comes on, sign. Yes, ma'am. Here you go. Face the TV. State your name. My name is Shelly Finchroden, sir. Ms. Finchroden, you're for the court charge. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Do you understand the charge? I did not do nothing. I promise. Talk about the fact of your case. Yes, I just need to make sure you understand what they charged you with. Yes, sir. All right. I'm seeing you've been giving copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. Could I please go home? I will be back. I promise I have a Did job. Uh-huh. Does the, the, she got someplace else to go? Okay. <laughs> All right, ma'am. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the services of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? No, sir. Yeah, criminal history? Grand Theft Auto 19, Battery 14. Locally, it goes back to 2000 with some PWCs and a DUI. I haven't been in the trouble since then, sir. And I'm on medication. My blood pressure's been rocketed. They've had me on, on, on watch all night. Uh, and had to give me medicine because I don't have my right medicine and they don't know uh, I really need it because of, uh, and I promise to God I do this <laughs> I uh, he, uh, he's mad because I called him cheap <laughs> Huh? Well, he admits that he's mad because you told him he needed to get a job to help the bills. Huh? But here's the problem. Your son's also on the other side, too. Is there, I mean, look, it's not just his word against yours. There's, there's another, there's also another witness that said that it happened. So I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just saying it didn't happen in a vacuum, okay? I'm not, I'm not telling you how it's going to shake out. I'm not telling you how it's going to, but I mean, it's, it's not just his word against yours, okay? But I have witnesses too. My niece was there too, okay, sir. Good. good. Your bond's going to be set at 10000 That's a, about a third of what normally happens on these. Your court date is March 4th at 9 o'clock. No contact directly, indirectly, or through a third party alleged victim. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck. Step to your right to the T. When the green light comes on, sign. <laughs> State your name, ma'am. Dennis Davis. All right, thank you. All right. All right.
Don't try to run out of the building no. like not paying it. No, go right. Okay, no, if you try to run out of the building, not, you got that pink hat on. We'll find <laughs> you. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beal Properties versus Mike Lucas. Oh boy, here we go. Morning, John. <laughs> Good morning. You're going to try to change that for me, aren't you? No. How are you doing? I'm fine. All right. Where are we on this? So we're in a position. Um, I had a discussion with Lucas. I think it was productive. We're basically in a position to dismiss he does have the money for the last two months that were owed um i don't want to speak for him but he did explain to me that he took issue with certain charges from the previous case zero out yet i explained to him that it was because there was a change in management at field the person that was aware of those facts apparently did not pass it on so that has been resolved. So hopefully we don't have to see Mr. Lucas again. Um, as long as he pays the last two months rent, which is all that he owes, which he did say that he withheld just because he was upset that he was still being charged those other items, uh, I think we should be all set. Well, the only problem I have, Your Honor, is this. He was going to have a problem. I'm just going to let you know. He was going to have a problem. Because last time, same statement, we'll dismiss it, no problem. And I said, no. So we had a special here next week about the late fees and the stuff that they wanted extra. They agreed not to take it. You will, said no late fees. I get back, next month's rent, $900 worth of late fees and all kind of stuff that they weren't, but they were, you know, basically they wanted the same thing that I came to court for. So I told them, you know, hey, in court they ruled this way. They said, it doesn't matter. We get our stuff. I got emails to verify all this, like 30 of them. So I said, I'm not paying you until clear this up. They wouldn't clear it until like two days ago two, three days ago, they sent me an email, said, now you only owe us this much, which was still 300 more. So I said, I'm not paying you, we'll just go to court. So now we're in here and they're saying the same thing again. Hey, it's okay, as long as you pay us. I don't want, I want an order prohibiting them from ever, you know, getting any more than they, they're entitled to the rent every month. Okay, so let me ask you this. How, what's the amount that you owe? Because you're going to have court costs. So, what I'm saying. Well, hold on, hold, hold on a second. What's plaintiff's claim that he owes just, as of now? Which Mr. Lucas went over with the utilities he is responsible for, and the insurance waiver is twenty one fifty eight. Ben. Okay. When I when you say court costs. I came, they're the ones that keep taking me to court, Your Honor, for like this issue here. They were collaterally stopped from even bringing them to court to relitigate the same issue again. All right. Okay. All right. You took I, my, you took my, which classes you take of mine? I took both of your classes. Which, you took both my classes. And that's where you got this collateral stop thing. Why are you going to use some big words on me? You know, I, 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 you taught me those words. I know, I know, but you're using it wrong. You know, apparently you need to come back. <laughs> no, no. All right. Mike, 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 listen, just listen. The important thing is to get it resolved, right? Okay. So of the 2158, what do you think you are? I owe them. That's the number that we discussed. I owe them. He's not disputing that. That's okay. Two months rent, the utilities, and I own that. Right. And I have it. Okay. So you're gonna pay them the twenty one fifty eight. Yeah. Today. And then right the. Now. Okay. Do you have it in a check? No, we talked about it. So they, when what you just said about it, they could get it. I have cash, so we'll give it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's fine. No, thanks to Cedric. Won't do it. All right. So who won't take cash? They won't take. I know she can't take cash. She can't go out of here walking with a bunch of cash out. So we can do it that way. I or I told her I'd get a money order, but she kind of liked to go walk over here to pay and get the money. <laughs> Yeah, you got to manage your friend because they won't manage. <laughs> See, I don't want to. You were the same way in class. I know I got an A in both your classes. <laughs> so, right. Mike, the parties have agreed on twenty one fifty eight. Right. You have twenty one fifty eight in cash. All right, you go up there with. No other fees feel proper. Oh, 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 hold it. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. I can't predict the future. All I can do is get rid of this case. And I'd like to do that sometime before dinner. So here's what's going to happen. You're going up. You're going to pay the $2,158 into escrow. Then you're going to come back down. We're going to get them a check. Now, in at that point, you're going to be paid, right? right? So now, if they come back and start adding things, which you think they're going to do in the future, whatever, this, you have a case at the point that it will be zero. All right. Okay? Then you don't have to start using words like collateral stopped and all that other stuff. Was I correct? Because it, Well, no, you weren't. But I am... <laughs> You know me. I'm just a simple country judge. I can't be listening to all those big words. All right? Okay, we can do that. So you go up there, you pay, come back, and then we're going to take care of your case. <laughs> and think of some other word I taught you that you think it's going to work. I don't know what was going to <laughs> Whitaker Oaks versus Anthony Williams. Well, this episode. The Rob Henry. Did you want to play? Where is that? The Rod of Bob Martin. The Henry. Like no, no, I'm. One catastrophe at a time. <laughs> Henry. I'm looking for Daryl Henry. Where's that on the docket? Does anybody know? Oh, it's not on the docket. That's one that is not was not set today. That's the dismissal. <laughs> Mr. Laird, you signed this one. I'm signing the dismissal. Is that what y'all want? Yes, thank you, Judge. Done. I was here and who is this? This is Nashila Bailey. Where? When was that done? It's today. It's on today's doc. It's page two. it's moving through. I guess I don't have it yet. It's it's not. It's only three on a motion to revoke. But you've got a plea agreement. It's a motion to revoke, no agreement. It's just an it's an open plea. It's true on a motion to revoke. And your name, ma'am? Yeshiva Bailey. Miss Bailey. Okay. 2136944. That's correct. Yeah. 2136944 is now called. And you are uh, Yeshiva. Deshaun Bailey. Yes, sir. Present with your attorney, Mr. Duthler, and the state's attorney. There is a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation filed on October 4th of 2023. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this uh, motion to revoke probation? Can we proceed in summary? Yes. In summary, this states that on May 20th, and raise your right hand, ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make during this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes, sir. What we're hearing? This motion states that on May 22nd of last year, 
you were placed on five years deferred or unadjudicated probation or forgery. Is that true? Yes, sir. Allegation one states you failed to report to the Jefferson County Probation Office. Order about May 25th, June 15th, July 11th, 2023, in violation of your probation order. Is that true or untrue? True. Number two, you failed to provide verification performing community service hours as required. Is that true? True. Are you pleading true to allegations one and two of this motion voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because they are true? True. Do you understand by a plea of true and knowing and violate uh, and voluntary plea of true is enough to grant this motion to revoke probation? Your probation can be revoked. You can be found guilty now and sentenced no less than 180 days up to two years in the state jail. Yes. Sir. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? Yes. Sir. I find you are pleading true voluntarily. You understand uh, and appreciate the consequences of uh, shooting through. And you were placed on probation on May 22nd. And from probation, uh, we have a representative from probation office here. Did she ever report? Uh, no, sir. Never? No, sir. <laughs> well, goodness. Why would you do that? Sorry, every time I got out of jail, I don't know that when I was home, I didn't know where to go. We had the probation office to go. I didn't even have the money to go there. I didn't even have the scan of woods in the bakery to there, stole my paperwork. Wait, wait, wait. Where were you living before? I was taking 255 North 10th Street. When did you go into the woods? Uh, May 22nd when I got out. Okay. But it was, I mean, you knew where the, but you, where, where in the woods? What woods? Right there by uh, where we track right there off 10th Street. Okay. Okay. Well, that was my first time ever being homeless. Like, and I really had a mental break. I do apologize because I know you didn't give me such a moment. Let me see percentage report. You have a very lengthy criminal history here of misdemeanors um, from 2000 and looks like 2000. You were convicted in um, Los Angeles County. Uh, for battery and prostitution. Then in 2001, again, prostitution, a couple, illegal possession of drugs, contempted for it in 06. All of this is Los Angeles County, Los Angeles County. Then those are misdemeanors. Uh, 2004, convicted of illegal possession of controlled substance. 2003 convicted uh, and placed on supervision out of Los Angeles County. Then prostitution, three years, 2008, and illegal possession of a destructive device. Wow. Three years prison. And that was three years supervision with a year in jail in 2008. Then forgery, this one. So all of these were in Los Angeles County. What led you to Boma? I'm actually from Boma. I came here to change my life. For the better or worse? For the better. Well, it's not turning out better the way this is working out, right? Okay. All right. How long has she, what's her credit time here? It's a second. All right, from probation, uh, there's not much, I guess, we can add, can we? Yeah. No, sir, but... Uh, you know, what, what do we know about her uh, that you can add to the... Pre, to the... Well, we would uh, like to have what is made uh, placed on the hobby university. Do you need to take uh, Perhaps we run out of shot at uh, probation. Thank you. 
Well, why would we do that? I mean, she didn't even bother to report. Why do we? What is the definition of, of insanity? Repeating behavior, expecting things are going to change, and we're going to. What do we do? Open the door, though. For what? You're on probation, but don't report. If they all reported, if they all failed to report following this, and they were caught and came back, then we're saying we're going to treat you all fairly, and everybody gets to report whatever they decide. I think it's a bar that has to be jumped over. And there's uh, some people, there are terms of probation that some people have a hard time following, but failing to report. I mean, report. you got to report if you don't report. But there are a lot of people who find it inconvenient or they just don't want to do it. And they could say, well, if I get caught, I'll just raise the Ms. Sheila uh, Bailey rule. And I get to start over again when I'm ready. Because she's something I'm... Yeah. I mean, here we are in February and it's nine months have gone yeah. on. The, um, was there any restitution on this? No, sir. Um, what do y'all say? Stay? End of thing. Was there any specific reason why they uh, were wanting to continue her on probation? I think not showing is something that the court takes very seriously, uh, especially when you never and when you well, that's supervision. I mean, that's what it's all about: is just be supervised. You can't supervise. But I have 5,000 people if they all decided we're not going to report. But I am looking at just her history judge and looking at the amount of time that she's served in past cases where she was revoked or convicted. Um, it looks like the most I've seen. Well, what's your point, though? I know I see that. Um, is one she's year. got 93 days credit right now. Right. As, what, uh, do you, what do you think? I mean, I, days? yeah, I was going to say six. What months. do you say? If, if you're going to revoke her, I think that sounds very interesting. Ma'am, what would you like to add? Anything else? I mean, you can see you got to put out the effort. And you don't. Uh, I know there's some, you got situations here, but you got to fix them. By making better choices. If nothing further, I'm going to find there is sufficient evidence supporting this motion to revoke uneducated probation to grant it by a preponderance of the evidence or greater as allegations one and two have been proven true. Uh, your deferred or unadjudicated probation is revoked earlier in this case, you pleaded guilty voluntarily. You were mentally competent to do so. You understand the consequences of pleading guilty. There was sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea. Mistakes exhibit one admitted there to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this state jail felony or forgery. I'm uh, sentencing you here to confinement in the state jail for six months. You will be given credit for all time uh, you have served toward that. And uh, uh, please uh, do your best to fix the situation and do better. Thank you. That is all. All right. Next is who else is in the queue? I have. Yeah.